Hello, everyone. My name is Dylan March, and I'm currently an undergraduate student here at the University of Guelph. I would like to welcome you to the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences and the Ontario Veterinary College's Convocation Ceremony this morning. The University of Guelph is honored by our graduates, and we take great pride in this convocation. I'd like to tell you a little bit about the proceedings today. The ceremonials used for conferring degrees have evolved over a millennium, and the gowns and hoods represent that history. In general, the gowns for the baccalaureate and the magisterial degrees are black, and the color of the hood is different for each degree program. The doctorates at the University of Guelph have a bright blue gown, and the honorary degrees are an even brighter color. The University of Guelph crest that you see on the curtains behind me and shown on the cover of the convocation program also represents our specific history. The emblems on the crest show links with the royal city of Guelph through the white stallion above, the connection to the liberal arts through the book, to the sciences through the astrolabe, and our connection to abundance in agriculture through the cornucopia. The University of Guelph motto, Rerum Cognoscere Causis, is a quote from Virgil. It is variously translated to be either happy is the one who is able to ascertain the reason of things, or perhaps to know the meaning of things. The procession of people into the hall are also influenced by ancient tradition. The Piper will hear all the start of the procession of graduates, the students who are coming to graduate today. This will be followed by the arrival of the mace, leading the platform party. The mace is a symbol of, symbol of authority of the university and will be carried by the beetle. In medieval universities, the beetle was chosen by the instructor to work as an assistant. Today, the beetle is the ceremonial officer of Senate. Following the beetle and mace is the vice chancellor, members of the administration and the honorees, fellows of the university, members of the board and senate, and members of faculty and staff. The degrees will be conferred in the order that you see in your program. The, degree, the degrees are separated by categories, representing the specific degree being awarded within the, within the college. We will begin with the doctorates and the magisteriates, followed by the baccalaureate degrees. The name reader will announce the degree being awarded at the start of each category. As the name of each student is called, the beetle will place the hood over the recipient's shoulders. This moment will be videoed and, technology willing, there will be a simultaneous live cast of the event to allow family members and friends to watch from a distance. The Vice Chancellor will then confer the degree. We understand the joy and excitement accompanying such an auspicious occasion, but we ask that you hold your applause until after each group of graduates has crossed the stage. There will be an opportunity for a truly thunderous applause after each group has graduated. Once all the degrees are conferred and all the cheers are cheered, the Vice Chancellor will then close the ceremony and a recessional will play. Please remain standing during the recessional until all the platform party has processed into the hall. I would also like to mention that today we are introducing a new feature to Convocation. Our colleagues from Alumni Affairs and Development are hosting a new social media program developed for Convocation. So share your photos, memories, and advice with graduating students by joining us on social media and using the hashtag GuelphGrad. Could I also ask that once the ceremony begins, that you please turn off your cell phones. Finally, may I be the first person to congratulate the graduates on their various successes and offer my congratulations to the family and friends who are here to support them. Welcome to Convocation at the University of Guelph.
I would like to acknowledge the Adewandaran people on whose traditional territory the University of Guelph resides and offer respect to our Haudenosaunee and Anishinaabe and Métis neighbors as we strengthen our relationships with them. Some people think that if there's no higher power behind the universe, as many of you, including me, have concluded, there can be no real significance, much less spiritual significance, to an event like this. I disagree. If you are the parent or friend of one of these graduates, you know today is significant. Some of you may be so surprised and even shocked that your son, daughter, or friend made it to today that you now believe in miracles, if not God. You are proud of what they have achieved. As they face the challenge of finding the right context to apply their education, may you continue your support, always mindful that to be loving, caring, and encouraging is at the heart of providing spiritual care that we all need. If you are one of the faculty members who have taught, cajoled, encouraged, and mentored these graduates to reach this milestone, you too know that this day is significant. May you have a deep sense that it was worth it, that this is what all their years of education were for, that this is what your long years of education were for, and may you have renewed energy to do the same with the next class of undergraduates. undergrads. And for the students before me who are graduating today, may you be thankful, determined, and good. Thankful for your parents, your profs, and the life force that brought you into existence, determined to make this world a better place, and good, both in your field and in your character. If spirituality is about values more than beliefs, you have been encouraged at the University of Guelph to embrace life-enhancing values such as caring and compassion, along with academic achievement. Whether you believe in a higher being, an impersonal life force, or simply in life, love, and goodness in our universe, may this be one of the most significant days of your life as you become more equipped than ever in whatever field you go into to change lives and improve life. Amen, which means so be it. You may be seated. Well, members of the board, honorary fellows and faculty of the university, families and friends of the graduates, and last but certainly not least, graduates, welcome to the celebration of convocation at the University of Guelph. My name is Franco Baccarino, and I have the honor of serving as the President and Vice-Chancellor of this great university. And I'm privileged to welcome you all to uh, Convocation today. I'd like to extend a particular welcome to this morning's special guest, Dr. John Prescott, who will be named University Professor Emeritus, and he'll be introduced to you formally in a moment. Welcome, John. As we begin today's uh, convic uh, convocation ceremony, I do believe that a few congratulatory remarks are in order. First of all, graduates, this is your big day. You've worked hard, you've persevered, and you've made it. Well done, well deserved. Now, a big part of this day is about you, but it's not all about you. Um, and before we go on, graduates, there is a group of uh, individuals here who I suspect you'll agree deserve your special attention. And those are the, uh, the family members and the friends who have supported you from the sidelines and throughout your time at Guelph. So graduates, I invite you, actually all to stand up, turn around, salute and applaud your family and friends who have been with you along this great journey. Great, thank you. The parents and friends need a little shout out here. So. so in preparing this welcome, I reflected on how this university has prepared you, our graduates, for this very moment and for the years, for the years that will follow. And, and let me explain what I mean by that. I'm an optimist by nature, and in many ways, I do believe we are living through what might be remembered as one of the most important and exciting periods in history. The world today is marked by absolutely unprecedented dynam dynamicity and dynamism. Incredible advances in the life sciences and in the physical sciences, in information and communication technology, in the sheer volume, in the sheer volume of discovery and knowledge. 
And through all of this change, advances in the social science, in the arts and the humanities, they test our belief systems. They challenge our constructs against new and evolving societal contexts. And by doing so, they offer new information that helps us adapt, helps us adapt to our changing realities. We're also witnessing disciplines and subject matter that have been isolated, coming together in fresh and exciting ways. Music and computer technology, healthcare and robotic engineering, manufacturing and ag agriculture. The interconnectedness of our world today makes knowledge more accessible and more abundant than ever. This is accelerating discovery and new learning faster than many of us can even keep up with. So what are the attributes of humans that will allow us to thrive in such dynamic times? Well, they include the ability as individuals and I would say as a university for us to adapt and readapt in a healthy way to uncertainty and to change. And by adaptation, I'm not referring to this simple process of habituation, habituation and passive habituation. I'm referring to the act of very consciously and deliberately redefining ourselves based on what is going on around us. When faced with change, people adapt. Sometimes they adapt in healthy ways and sometimes they adapt in not so healthy ways. The opportunity for you, our graduates, is to adapt to change in a healthy way. To undertake thoughtful analysis that will help uncover what I like to call the upside of uncertainty and change. This provides hope, provides inspiration, and provides discovery. It's about taking uncertainty and change and turning it into something special. Today, an important part of our mission as a university has been to provide our students, our graduates, with an environment of broad perspectives and analysis and the opportunity for you to adapt in healthy ways to a fast-changing world. Now, in pursuit of this healthy adaptation, we also need to remember and work to preserve and enhance what makes the University of Guelph so unique. Our integrity, our team and community spirit, characterized by the willingness, willingness to look out for our neighbors and to work to, together towards common goals. And it's demonstrated, I believe, through our volunteer work across this great city of Guelph and right around the world. How and what you choose to explore should be grounded in and guided by these timeless values that we have held for 150 years. So the university has worked hard to provide you with the tools to successfully adapt and navigate through the complexities and dynamics of modern society and to provide you with hope and with clarity. We've tried to instill an ability to adapt and I would say indeed to thrive within a more ambiguous and ever-changing environment. And part of that is that we've built a physical environment that has supported, supported your campus experience. A campus experience that has exposed you to meaningful learning, world-renowned breakthroughs, and personal growth. Through all this, the University of Guelph has provided you with a home away from home during a key transition in your own personal journeys, during a key period of transformation in your own development. So in short, I believe that we have um, contributed, the university has contributed in providing you with a nurturing environment, an environment that has enhanced your learning and incubated new ideas by facilitating meaningful human interaction and productive collaboration. Now the debate and discussion encouraged by university environments goes beyond technical skills and uh, transfers of information. It's in this physical space that you've developed the analytical and the soft skills that will serve you well through each and every job you might have. What you have learned here goes beyond teaching subject matter strictly and towards the process of learning, learning to learn, adaptation, creativity. As successful graduates, many of you will blend knowledge, mixing and matching ideas from separate disciplines. And your time at Guelph has provided you with the creative and the intellectual skills to apply that knowledge in innovative ways, in energizing ways, and in new and different ways. So as you enter this exciting next stage of your lives, I encourage you to draw on all of your University of Guelph experiences as learners and as members of a very special community, and to bring the very best you have to offer to each and every experience that you encounter, to your work life, to your personal relationships, and to your service to society. Thank you very much.
On the recommendation of the Senate of the University of Guelph, it is my honor to present to you John Prescott for the distinction of University Professor Emeritus. Dr. John Prescott has had a long and distinguished career as a faculty member in the Ontario Veterinary College at the University of Guelph. He has excelled as a researcher, teacher, administrator, and author. The production of more than 200 scientific papers is impressive, but more important than the volume is the high quality of Dr. Prescott's contributions to science. He is considered by many to be the foremost veterinary bacteriologist in the world. Without any doubt, he is the researcher who has been the most influential in the field of infections in foals caused by Rhodococcus equi and the role of the bacteria, Clostridium perfringens, in disease in poultry, pigs, cattle, and dogs. As the ultimate testimony of his achievements, it has been proposed that the name Rhodococcus equi be changed to Prescottella equi to celebrate Dr. Prescott's many contributions towards unraveling the pathogenicity of this bacterium. Dr. Prescott is also a global leader in antimicrobial stewardship and the public health impact of the use of antibiotics in animals. He has been instrumental in organizing three international conferences on antimicrobial resistance to bring together human and veterinary medicine practitioners, as well as the farming community. Over the span of Dr. Prescott's career, he has mentored 39 graduate students who have been inspired by his creative teaching, and many have gone on to prominent positions in government and universities. His expertise and scientific reputation have resulted in his often being asked to be an external, external examiner for doctoral theses and have garnered him leadership roles in several international science organizations. As chair in the Department of Pathobiology, Dr. Prescott played a major role in the design of the Pathobiology and Animal Health Building, and as graduate coordinator, he introduced innovations such as the three-minute thesis presentation to help graduate students summarize their research. John Prescott has been a professor for over 25 years, has consistently performed at an exceptional level in research, teaching, and administration, and has a record of sustained internationally recognized scholarship. In well-deserved recognition of his outstanding and ongoing contributions to both the scholarly community and the University of Guelph, I ask you, Mr. Chancellor, to confer upon Dr. John Prescott the distinction of University Professor Emeritus. By the authority of the Senate of the University of Guelph, I have the honor to name you University Professor Emeritus. John Prescott to now give the convocation address. Mr. Chancellor, President Vaccarino, distinguished guests, graduates, family, and friends, it's a distinct honor to make this convocation address and to share this very special day with the graduates. It seemed kind of far away, but uh, I'll, I'll try to talk to you. And I congratulate you all on your achievement. Interestingly, I, I'm just sort of leaving the stage while you're arriving at the stage. I'm looking backwards while, while you're looking uh, forwards. I, but I'm also looking forward to the slightly scary, but also exciting future as a retiree in the way that you may be looking forward slightly apprehensively, but also excitedly as you face the future. It's worth taking a moment to reflect on your achievement. None of you have reached today without the ability to organize yourself, the ability to analyze things, the ability to work hard, to put in late nights, and to show the many other attributes that have allowed you to be successful and to arrive at today. In other words, you've shown that you can learn. I, I'm actually convinced that one can learn almost anything, 
and that one puts to one's mind to. And so whether you've achieved a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a doctoral degree, you've shown that you can learn and you have the confidence now that you can continue to learn. And so you can keep moving forward and you're off to a good start. You've also learned to think critically. We, we desperately need critical thinkers, people who can analyze problems well, people who can think creatively, um, and who can think for themselves. I think learning to think for yourself is probably the most difficult thing. And um, critical thinking is not the same as negative thinking. It's quite hard to get that message across sometimes, but it's very different. The future is always uncertain, and it's normal to wonder whether you are adequately prepared for it. And what I'm saying is that you are. I'm reminded of part of something that Nelson Mandela quoted at his inauguration, which I find inspiring. Our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. Your playing small does not serve the world. There's nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine, as, as children do. This light is not just in some of us, it's in all of us. And it's in everyone. And as we let our, our light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to also do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. So my message to you is uh, don't shrink, don't fear, don't hold back from the future, your future, embrace it. Help us, help those around you. We're all in this together. Uh, let's make things better in the time that's available to us. I, I've learned that it's more important to be a host of the world than to be a guest in the world. And as I look backwards, I, I realize that it's so important to um, cultivate a mindset of gratitude. I, I'm so grateful to so many people who helped me. I'm grateful to my wife, Kathy. I'm grateful to my parents who sacrificed for me. I'm grateful to the people who inspired me, who taught me, to my colleagues, to friends, but perhaps especially, especially to my harshest critics. I'm grateful to the University of Guelph, to the Ontario Veterinary College, to the Department of Pathobiology, to the Ontario Ministry of Agriculture, Food and Rural Affairs, and to Canada generally. We have so much to be grateful for. The, the list is, is endless. Another thing I realize as I've aged is it's, it's very easy to take so many things for granted. Don't. Don't take your family and friends for granted. Don't take democracy for granted. Don't take your country for granted. Don't take your health for granted. Don't take antibiotics for granted. Um, in some ways, this advice links to the need for gratitude and for having a critical mind. And as uh, President Vaccarino said, don't be afraid of change. One of the many paradoxes of life is that the only way that things will change, stay the same, is if they change. Also cultivate a, an attitude of compassion, the ability to suffer with others. Be compassionate for yourself, be compassionate with the many who are suffering, be compassionate for the planet, be compassionate for the whole of creation. There, there's actually so much inspiration in the world. Um, I love these words from Mother Teresa. Life is an opportunity, benefit from it. Life is beauty, admire it. Life is a dream, realize it. Life is a challenge, meet it. Life is a duty, complete it. Life is a game, play it. Life is a promise, fulfill it. Life is sorrow, overcome it. Life is a song, sing it. Life is a struggle, accept it. Life is a tragedy, 
confront it. Life is an adventure, dare it. Life is luck, make it. Life is precious, so do not destroy it. Life is life, fight for it. Finally, as I reflect on it, I find that life is made up of a series of moments. If you're doing what feels right for you, that make things that make you happy, that give you a sense of flow, then you're probably in the right place. Have confidence and trust in those moments, moments such as this today. As John Macefield wrote, best trust the happy moments, what they gave makes man less fearful of the certain grave and gives his work compassion and new eyes. The days that make us happy make us wise. So best of luck. Thank you very much, Dr. Prescott. I guess you, uh, you gave a challenge to them and to us to appreciate life fully. I can't speak about the antibody reference, but uh, certainly uh, I think uh, it's a challenge which we'd all accept. So thank you very much for your inspirational words. Um, and I guess now I have to look this way too. Uh, now is the moment that you've been waiting for. So would the graduating class please rise? Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars who have fulfilled the statutory requirements laid down by the Senate of the University of Guelph that they may be admitted to their various and several degrees. By virtue of the authority vested in me and in the University of Guelph, I hereby accept you for admission to the various and several degrees with all the rights, privileges, and obligations appertaining thereto. Will members of the graduating class please be seated. Good morning graduates, proud family and friends of the graduates. I'm sure you'll be excited, perhaps a little relieved, certainly happy to see your particular graduate walk across the stage and be meted by the Chancellor. And, I want, uh, and you may want to express your emotions in some audible manner. Please go ahead, this is fine. But may we ask the general audience hold your collective applause until after the presentation of each of the degree programs, and we will provide the cue. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you this scholar from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that he may be admitted to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Craig Patrick Allen. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the Ontario Veterinary College that they may be admitted to the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Jennifer Lynn Giffen. Kayla Rebecca Price. Please join me in congratulating our Doctor of Philosophy graduates. <laughs> Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the Ontario Veterinary College that they may be admitted to the degree Doctor of Veterinary Science. Joelle Christina Ingrave. Radu Adrian Zorzorla. Our 
our doctor of veterinary science graduates. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present you these scholars from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree Master of Arts. Salome Madani. Melissa Chubak. Christy May. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree Master of Science. Darren Daly. David DeVito. Teresa Din. Justin Ferdinand. Please join me in congratulating our master's students from the College of Social and Health. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the Ontario Veterinary College that they may be admitted to the degree Master of Public Health. Yitran Bouchard. <laughs> Samantha Rusezi. Melissa Marie Cummings. <laughs> Megan Lindsay Hempel. Ahmed Lalu. Vanit Rakra. Allison Rothwell. Kate Stachison. Michelle Yvonne Thompson. Victoria Traister. Natalie Ann Ward. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the Ontario Veterinary College that they may be admitted to the degree Master of Science.
Jonathan Aslan. Megan Dare. Jacqueline Christine Dines. Sean Masson. Laura Calder Ramsey. Saudet Salim. Jason Ferreira. Please join me in congratulating our master's graduates from the Deputy from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Applied Science Honours Program. Aniko Balint. Megan Kathleen Downey. Laura Garipi. Michael Stephen Mansfield. Ellery Rogerson. Sonia Velojevic. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Arts Honors Program. Danielle Leslie Bede Ashton Brown, with distinction. Desiree Rose Barber, with distinction. Kathleen Elizabeth Bruff. Yeah, big! <laughs> Megan Teresa Marie Calhoun. Justin Leandres Figueredo, with distinction. Amber Fitzpatrick.
Shannon Marie Hartford. Jason. Mallory Crystal Cohn. Emily Lynn Miller. Alicia Dawn Patterson. Nivala Davina Persad Maharaj. John Thomas Aaron Tiesenbach. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present to you these scholars from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that they may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Arts General Program. Yo Apoku Adeji Afriyi. Michelle Clark with distinction. Siobhan Adriana Gerben. Kaylee Morgan Langdon. <coughs> Corin Estelle Lucci. <coughs> Caitlin Marie McLenahan. Seth Michael Miller. Kristen Sarah Murphy. Christina Marie Knoll. Jessica Lynn Smith. Alexandra Topisirovich. Michael Tyler Trumper. Mr. Chancellor, I have the honor to present you with this scholar from the College of Social and Applied Human Sciences that she may be admitted to the degree of Bachelor of Science Honors Program. Lindsay Emily Gilmore. Please join me in congratulating this group of graduates.
Mr. Chancellor, I would ask you to confer the various and several degrees on the graduates listed in the program but unable to be present at this ceremony. in me and in the University of Guelph, I confer the various and several degrees in abstention on the graduates not present. Well, you've done it, and it's my pleasure to uh, provide some final remarks uh, to conclude the ceremony. And uh, I promise to be neither too long nor too preachy, uh, which is always a fine balance. Uh, and I'll certainly return to some of the topics or the issues that were mentioned in Dr. Prescott's uh, uh, presentation. Today we came together to celebrate an important transition in your life. And for many of you, I guess it's easy to, uh, to think of it as the end of a process, with all the days of studying and exams and assignments over. But your pro process of learning would not begin here at the University of Wealth, nor would it end when you exit the room and enjoy the company of your friends and family today. Today is just the beginning of a lifelong learning process during which the education that you've received here at the University of Guelph, both inside and outside the classroom, will serve you well. We hope that, you have, that we have succeeded in opening your eyes to the complexity of life and multitudes of perspectives based on culture, upbringing, and experience. We hope that we've given you a glimpse of a greater knowledge of the world around us, of how humans interact with each other for good or for bad, of arts and science and history, and the importance of caring for those around us and the planet we live on. Remember that your education has given you endless possibilities and opportunities and responsibilities. On one hand, it allows you the capacity to take advantage of opportunities that will serve you personally to achieve your own goals. But on the other hand, it highlights your responsibility to play an important role in civil society, whether local, national, or international. So we ask you to be active participants in the world around you. The world needs you to help resolve serious social issues and we need you to make inform, informed decisions that can take into account the complexity of the global world. We definitely need you to apply your knowledge and energy to address increasingly complex issues. But of course, dealing with these important issues will not be easy. Many of us feel that a single person's efforts will not resolve the complexity of the world's problems. But if not you, if not us, then who will be responsible? Your university education has provided you with the critical skills to answer complex questions. It's provided you with ways to research, communicate, inform, and influence. So it's now up to you to put this knowledge to good use and to make your mark on the world around you. And as you make that mark, Remember that the University of Guelph has become a small part of who you are and that you have also become a part of our collective history. Your association with the University of Guelph is lifelong and know that you are always welcome to return, to visit us, to learn more and to continue sharing in this vibrant community of learning. We are proud of your achievement and on behalf of the entire University of Guelph, I offer you my personal congratulations and best wishes for an exciting and successful future. Congratulations. And my final role here today is to be the announcement guy. Uh, so uh, I just wanted to let you know that we are hosting four convocations today. And as soon as this convocation concludes, we'll already have to start uh, setting up for the next convocation. So I would like, I would ask you, doing my best flight attendant possibilities, that you exit the side doors 
so that uh, the next group uh, that will have the convocation ceremony next will enter through the back door. So we appreciate your help there. Uh, the other thing that we would like you to do is to return your gowns. Uh, so please, to do so, just return them downstairs where you actually got the gowns to begin with. So again, we appreciate that. Following convocation, the deans will host a reception for all graduates and their guests in Creole Hall. This is an opportunity to congratulate the graduates, and we hope you can arrange to attend. Uh, and of course, if graduates could uh, gather their belongings from downstairs before the next ceremony, we would appreciate that too. And on this, congratulations graduates, we are certainly proud of your achievements and I will let the last very short words to Chancellor Mernish. Convocation is dismissed. Thank <laughs> you.